Hi there, and let's get to it. Looking at the last palette on the color page today, and that's the keyframes. If keyframing or animation is a new concept for you, I recommend you check out the tutorial made about keyframing on the edit page, which covers all the fundamental principles. Today we're just looking at a slightly different interface of something that performs the exact same function. The keyframes palette is a very versatile tool. You can animate virtually any grade or effect that you generate inside of the color page, not to mention the sizing controls of the individual nodes and clips. Some examples of what can be animated is a change of luminance in a clip over time, especially helpful if your camera suddenly changes exposure in the middle of a shot. It could be changing the color of a single element in your clip over time, or it could be more physical sizing information like position, rotation, and scale. The keyframes palette is divided into two halves, the keyframe track headers and the timeline ruler where you'll be dropping all your keyframes. The arrows next to the headers reveal and conceal all of the sub-controls available inside of that category and give you the option to activate or deactivate the category, lock it to prevent further changes, or to drop keyframes. On their own, these labels can be considered like master tracks because you'll be able to drop keyframes on them to indicate that you want to activate every single one of the functions that they control. You also have the option to switch between color and sizing modes only, or to stick to all. There's a scroll bar next to it that allows you to zoom in on the timeline in case you want finer control over your keyframes. And perhaps the most useful of all is the expansion button in the top right hand corner that allows you to make a much larger timeline and that will allow you to keyframe more carefully. As with any other kind of animation, you need at least two keyframes to perform a change. And there's two types of keyframes that we work with in this palette, dynamic and static. Here's a representation of the difference between the two. With dynamic keyframes, you get interpolation. The software builds information between the keyframes by averaging or blending the data between the two. With static keyframes, the change will be sudden and it will occur as soon as the new keyframe comes into play. So let's say I want to change the color of this mug. I can begin by using the hue versus hue HSL curve, selecting the blue of the mug. I'm going to check to see that the selection works and that looks pretty good. And what I'm going to do is arm my color corrector, right click on the timeline and add dynamic keyframe. Now, because it's a master, it will drop keyframes on all of the values. So you can choose to delete any keyframes that you don't want to target. Or better yet, you might just want to target the one thing that you want to animate. Right click, add dynamic keyframe. I'm then going to go down in time and rotate between the colors to change the color of the mug. And this little gray fade out represents the fact that this is two dynamic keyframes that are now blending into each other gently. I can choose to select my keyframes and change them to static frames. This will remove that interpolation and from now on my cup will go from being blue to immediately switching to pink. If you select a clip that has more than one node, each node will be represented by a new corrector master which will allow you to expand and control the individual elements inside the nodes which is part of what makes this such a powerful tool. You can animate backwards by going to your final position, dropping a keyframe, and then going up the timeline to make changes to the look of your footage. You can always speed up an animation by moving the keyframes closer together. And just like the inspector window, you're able to right click on any keyframe and change its dynamic attributes. That means that you're given Bezier curve-like control over the speed and strength of your animation. So in this case, instead of the animation being linear, it's going to start slow, speed up, and then slow down before it ends. You can delete keyframes by selecting them and clicking backspace, and you can also copy keyframes by selecting them and clicking Command C and Command V. Let's not forget our sizing controls, which reflect the controls inside of the sizing palette. Convergence, float window, and auto align all refer to 3D stereoscopic workflows, so input sizing for the majority of us will be enough. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time.